Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the final episode in the Coding Geometry Dash in Java series. If you remember from the last episode, what we did was we just implemented the portals and box triggers. And then in this tutorial, I'm just going to go over a few odds and ends that we never really covered, but have been present throughout the whole thing. And I'm going to give you some suggestions on how you could fix it. We're not actually going to fix it because I want you guys to do that. You have enough knowledge from this whole series. You should be able to fix these things on your own now. And I just wanna go through sort of explaining some of the things that we did, some of the things we could have done better, and some things that we will change with the next tutorial that we will be going over. So without further ado, let's get into this final episode and let's see what things that we have missed along the way. Like I said before, in the last tutorial, what we got to was we can now fly through these portals and stuff, and it successfully uh, moves with the player. Now, some of the things that we should go over are some of the things that need fixing. First of all, something I noticed just then, uh, let's place in a few blocks here. And if we just slowly let the player go up, you will notice that the camera will not move with the player. So if we keep going up, and going up, which is good in like the case of the spaceship, but in this case, we do want the camera to move up with the player. And so you'll notice no matter how high we get, it doesn't seem like the player is gonna be moving up. And then let's go just a few more blocks just to make sure that it absolutely is not going up. And as you can see, as we go up and up and up, the camera just doesn't move. So that's problem number one, and that should actually be pretty easy to solve. So let's do that real quick, because I think that is important and should be included in the tutorial. Uh, basically, if we go to our wherever our camera is tracking the player, right here we have, if the camera position is greater than this, then we set it to that. And then we say the camera position is equal to the player's position minus the camera's offset in the y direction. And that's just as easy as removing the if statement we have inside level scene around the camera position. I don't know why we had that there, but uh, just remove that if statement and then you'll see that it is now working correctly. So the camera moves up once the player gets to a certain height and follows the player and then follows the player down. Okay, so that's one problem that we had. Another problem we have is if we get into one of these small blocks, uh, so player should be able to jump on top of this guy uh but watch what happens when we try and do that uh he jumps above it did you notice that it's kind of quick let's do it one more time and he jumps up here and he was above the square so what's happening there is that these squares if you remember when we create them in the menu container we just give them a default width and height of 42 by 42. so if we go into our menu item and this is going to be for a lot of items that we have too because a lot of them are not standard heights and widths so if we go into main container you can see while we're adding the tabs um, we just add them and then we give them a box bounds so this one just gets a standard width and height standard width and height and we don't really change it depending on each specific box so this is where the idea of like prefabricated game objects comes in, prefabs. If you've ever had Unity, you know you have these things. So we want certain settings for different types of objects, and this is sort of our prefab generator. This generates all the prefabs for us, and inside here is where you would spe set specific settings for each type of block. So when we're in the second tab, and we have those small blocks, we would uh, make this height a little bit smaller, which you do. But then you need something else, because even though we have the height as small, so... Let's go into here one more time, and if we place these in, um, what you'll notice is if I place this in and I can't click on it. So if you notice, when I click on it, it's up here. And so this is a problem with just where we have the standard default for where it's supposed to be drawn. It's supposed to be drawn at the top left, but in reality, it's getting drawn at the top, the bottom left. And so to fix this, what I ended up doing and the actual game is inside box bounds, I have a couple variables uh, up here that are just called public float x buffer equals 0, 0.0f, public float y buffer equals 0, 0.0f. And so what these are, these are special variables that basically say, hey, this is at this position plus a little bit extra. And so then what I did was then just like y buffer in this case would be, I think, we have 42 minus uh, 16, so whatever that is. <laughs> and 
uh, basically you set it. So then if we go back into our main container and uh, right inside here, we're, when we're adding the second one, we would also say, uh, let's move, first of all, this into its own statement. And then we'll just say box bounds. And I'll say box bounds, box bounds equals paste that. And then you would say box bounds dot Y buffer equals uh, 42 minus 16. I can't do fast math. <laughs> okay. And then you would add that component. Then what we would do inside the box bounds is we would take into account this X buffer and this Y buffer. So no longer are we just saying this dot center X equals all this stuff. We're saying also plus this dot X buffer. And then we're saying plus this dot Y buffer. And if we go down to check collision, you notice that we have the centers in here. So we should be good with that. And then what you want to look for is just any place where we're using uh, things like this, exactly where we're using exactly the height and exactly the position, because this may have to take in minus Y buffer, uh, things like that, just to make sure that gets exactly the right position, everything. And then we'll do the same thing over here, minus Y buffer. And then if we scroll down just a little bit more and that should be good. Then you would have to change the serialization method too. So now we need to include this X buffer and Y buffer to the serialization. So we'll go down here and right below height, we will just do builder append add float property X buffer. And then we say this dot X buffer. And we say tab size plus one new line and a comma. And then literally just duplicate, duplicate that line. And then we would say Y buffer instead. And it would be this dot Y buffer. Then we would go down when we're deserializing and then deserialize those variables. So we'd say float X buffer actually before we do is trigger because we placed it right above is trigger up here. So then we would say float X buffer equals parser dot consume float property X buffer and duplicate that line. And then we would just change this to Y buffer and change this to Y buffer. And don't forget to include a comma inside of those to parse that comma. Then when we do this, we would just separate this into two phases. First, we say box bounds bounds equals paste that. And then we say bounds dot X buffer equals X buffer bounds dot Y buffer equals Y buffer. Okay, and then you would do the bounds. So now we have serialization deserialization complete for all that. So now when we place in one of these small blocks and we place it right here, you'll notice first of all, well, I click on it, it's still in the wrong place because we're not drawing it appropriately too. So right here, we would just say plus X buffer. Right here, we would just say plus Y buffer. Okay, and then we go one more time. <laughs> and once we place these in, you'll notice that I can't even click on it because we probably have some other problems. Here we go. So this isn't taking the buffer into account either. We want to say plus X buffer. Uh, we want to say plus X buffer here and we want to say plus Y buffer. And since these are initialized to zero, if the element doesn't have any buffers, then we don't have to worry about that returning something weird because it's just going to add zero to the width and the height and all that stuff. Okay. Let's try this one more time. So we go in here. So it's still drawing it in the wrong place and it still only triggers when we click into there. And then last thing we have to do is when we're copying this, also make sure to include those buffers. So right here we'll say bounds equals new box bounds width height and is trigger. But then we also want to say bounds dot X buffer equals X buffer and bounds dot Y buffer equals Y buffer. Then we just return that bounds instead of returning a new bounds right there. Okay, let's try this one more time. Fingers crossed it works this time. So then, okay, there we go. So now you can see the box bounds is clearly in the right place. And then if we were to save this and then run it and you notice he jumps on top and it sort of worked. There's a little bit of a bug there. Uh, we'll try it again with a few more, but you get my point. It should be working correctly now uh, because we sort of fixed those little bugs. Okay, so it's working. And then we just have to make sure that we're positioning him correctly. So instead of doing minus uh, the player height, we want to do minus player height and uh, plus the Y buffer instead of subtracting the Y buffer. And that should fix that last little bug. Um, so if we save it, run it, there we go. And it's running perfectly. Okay, so that's what I mean when I say basically we have these blocks that are smaller. Triangle bounds, there's the same issue. You have some smaller and different sized ones. Um, 
you have to go through accordingly. And then you also have this thing, which I would use a box balance to simulate and not even a triangle to simulate this thing. And so you just sort of have to go through and fix these little bugs uh, where, you know, you have these things and stuff. Um, it's simple. It's not something I don't think you guys can get. If you followed it along to this point, I definitely think you can get. It's literally just adding in a buffer for the X and the Y. Uh, and then having that set to zero when it's not there. All the calculations are exactly the same. It's mathematically sound to do this, and you should be fine. Um, one of the other things we never did was Z-indexing, uh, controlling that in the level editor. It's really simple, too. I used page up and page down arrow keys for that. And then when I just had selected objects, I just said if uh, page up or page down is pressed, uh, just move it. And you see that is clearly wrong. But I basically just said just move it down or up in the Z-indexing if one of those buttons is pressed. Um, not too bad. I think you guys could get that, too. And then uh, this little double image is probably a glitch where we have two components drawing at the same time. And so you would fix that just by finding the extra component that's being drawn and then basically forcing it to not draw. But um, other than that, there isn't really much that there is that we have to do. Like everything is things that you guys could do. I don't think I've missed anything. If I have, leave a comment and then I'll respond to that and talk about what I would do in a scenario like that if you guys find some bugs or something that aren't working quite well but I mean we do have a basic geometry dash game going if you wanted to you could build your own level and you could play your own level uh, I guess that's another thing I would add if I was you guys is the ability to first of all get out of that without exiting the screen but then also save different level files and stuff which I will get into in my next tutorial series which we're gonna be doing Mario and I will go over how to set up a little UI system to do that you guys have enough knowledge to do something like that though if you really want to um, last thing I think is worth mentioning if I hit F2 and I load these uh, so they're all here and they're all added but then if I hit F1 and then F3 it doesn't save them so something's going wrong when we're loading which should be a pretty easy fix too if we just go into our level editor scene and look at our import function. So we're importing it here. Okay, and so what I did to fix this was I did a few things. First of all, in the parser, uh, when you're opening a file, make sure to reset the offset to zero and the line to one. Uh, that could cause some problems where it's not quite finding the right stuff. And then inside of your level editor scene, I also added in a little thing here. So first of all, inside game object, I changed the serializable value to public so that we have access to it. And then I just remove all the game objects that are serializable from our current array so that if we have anything in the scene, it gets removed. And then I go through each of those objects and I actually remove it from the render and then I remove it from the game objects list. Then we go ahead and we import the level and that seems to have fixed that last bug. So uh, nothing else I can really think of that has any immediate concerns. If you guys think of something, let me know in the comments and I will explore that and consider making a new video if you guys really want me to. But that about covers it for Geometry Dash. Now I'll give you a sneak peek at the next tutorial series that we will be doing real quickly. So I've been working on Mario. I really want to do a physics engine next, but I don't feel comfortable enough in my understanding of it yet to go over that and it's not done yet too. So I figured we would just do another uh, tutorial on a game. And we'll use some different physics for Mario, some physics that were probably closer to what you actually used in the game. So as you can see, I have a whole UI system up here. And it's sort of like Geometry Dash, except a little bit different. Uh, you can resize these two. And it's got scrolling. All of this is hand-coded too. So we will be learning how to code this UI and everything. As you can see, it's still got some bugs. <laughs> but we will be learning how to code this entire UI, the window handler and everything, all this stuff. And then you can browse files and open them up and you can load the levels. Um, and then you can also save the level. So we'll do this one. So you can load the level and then it loads a new level and then you can save it and you can go between levels. And we're going to be going over a lot of new stuff. So we'll be using the base of the engine that we used for this one and then adding in these UI components and stuff that we can use. And then also adding in like uh, actual prefabricated game objects. So I'm going to remove these pipes and then have like more tabs for the windows and everything so we'll see how that works and stuff too i will be taking a break for the next week uh while i finish this and just work on this a little bit more so that i get it really well rounded 
by the time we start this tutorial. So I hope you guys liked this series. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next series in which we create Mario and recreate it from scratch and use a little bit of a different physics system for this game. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks guys.